Good morning, my name's Maurice Barrett and I'm here again with a life in lockdown. It seems as though it's going to go on for quite a while now. I don't think we're halfway through it. The Prime Minister said today that it may end on the 18th of May. Well, that means that we're not halfway through it yet. We've only been, a, I think, three weeks into it. I've got an interesting study. This is how I want to start it. We've all been programmed. Everyone, Christians, non-Christians. If you don't believe that statement, I believe you're naive. The whole world are conditioned in one way or another. Culture is only corporate conditioning. Think about it. We're getting a one world culture now. The world's getting westernised and we're getting one culture. So it's conditioning us to this one world culture. That abortion's acceptable, that transsexuality is normal. That, that all these things, political correctness is good. We're being conditioned. So let me try and convince you from logic and from the Bible. You know, most of the world's conditioned to believe the, that the news is true, that it's news. When it's carefully planned propaganda, the Tavistock Centre prepare it. There's no such thing as a free press. Most people in the world believe that science and what the medical world say is truth, when in fact it's what they want us to believe. Most of the world... Uh, almost, now believe abortion is acceptable, when the truth is it's murder. Most people believe, believe, most people in the world believe, that the earth took billions of years to form, when in actual fact, God created it in six days. Most Christians believe the church calendar is somehow connected to the Bible. When in fact, not one holy day, Easter, Christmas, Lent, Good Friday, uh, uh, all, all the days, Ash Wednesday, Shrove Tuesday, Halloween, they're all in the church calendar, and not one of them is talked about in the Bible. That's amazing. And yet most Christians believe it's somehow related to the Bible. It's actually to do with the Babylonian calendar and the Catholic Church paganism. Many church doctrines are not taught in the Bible. They're not taught by the apostles, the doctrines that we believe. They didn't teach them. But Christians believe what they're told from the pulpit. See, we're being conditioned. Well, I want to look at the story of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego to try and convince you of this fact and, and to prepare us. Nebuchadnezzar took the intelligence of Judea when he ransacked Jerusalem into Babylon. In fact, he took the creme de la creme. He was the most powerful man in the world, and a type of the Antichrist, a man of sin, king of Babylon. I'm looking at Daniel 1, so I'll quote the verses as I go along. Verse 3 and 4, And the king spoke unto Ashpenas, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, and of the king's seed and the princes, children in whom was no blemish, well-favoured, skilful in all wisdom, cunning in knowledge, and understanding science. They were to be trained, conditioned, to act and think like Babylonians. So they could be in the government and rule Babylon with Nebuchadnezzar. So they were to learn the language of the Babylonians, eat the king's food, adopt the culture and the gods of Babylon. Verse 4 and 5. And such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they may teach the learning and language of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily portion of the king's meat and the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they may stand before the king. Well, three years is an interesting time, because Jesus took three years to tra train 12 disciples so that they would stand, be conditioned to stand when persecution came. And they stood, and they were all martyred. Well, approximately 20,000 were taken into Babylon. That was a quarter of the people in Judea. Verse 6, Now among them were the children of Judea, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. 
Nebuchadnezzar wanted them to forget Jehovah and worship the Babylonian gods. And, and they were given names to reflect this. Daniel 1 verse 7, unto whom the princes of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, to Hananiah Shadrach, to Mishael Meshach, and to Azariah Abednego. Well, Daniel's name was changed to Belteshire, which means Bel, protect the king. Bel was one of their gods. Daniel means God is my judge. What a difference. Hananiah's name was changed to Shadrach, which means command of Aku. That was a Sumerian god. Mishael changed his name, had his name changed to Meshach, which possibly means it's a, not very certain, but who is what Aku is? And in Arcadian, Aku is the name of the Babylonian god of the moon. And Abednego means servant of Nebo. And Nebo's a Babylonian god of wisdom. So can you see how the names, the character, was wanting to be changed to serve foreign gods? When the command came to bow to the image, all those who were called, and there must have been hundreds from Judea who were training for the government, they all bowed. As soon as the king commanded, they all bowed, except three. Now, the question is, why did most of them bow and three not bow? Why did they remain standing? Well, they were all programmed and conditioned. Those who bowed were conditioned over three year, years, and those who didn't bow were conditioned over three years. The conditioning was different, and that made the difference whether they bowed or not. Most of them that bowed, well, all of them that bowed, were conditioned and accepted the culture of Babylon. They drank the king's wine, had his meat, learnt the language, served their gods. Verse 8, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he wouldn't defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor of the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. And the four of them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, decided they would live differently. They were renewing their minds. And when the test came, they didn't have to think. They didn't have to use the common sense or the reasonableness of the king's command. They were an automatic pilot because of the conditionings. Verse 16 and 17. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king, O king, we're not careful to answer thee in this matter. They didn't have to think they were an automatic pilot, just like the ones who bowed were an automatic pilot. So were Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. They were conditioned not to bow to anyone but their own God. Verse 18, But our God is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he'll deliver us out of your hand. But if not, if God doesn't deliver us, we're happy to burn. Be it known unto the old king, will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image that you've set up. So those who, who didn't bow didn't have to think either. They were an automatic car, pilot. And you're conditioned already to take the mark or not. It'll be too late when they, they, they force you to take the mark. You need to be conditioned now. You need to be adjusting now so that when the time comes, it's automatic. You don't take the mark. If you don't condition yourself, you're being conditioned by the system, the world, and we're not supposed to be of the world, and you'll take the mark. I promise you, you'll take the mark because you'll, everyone will be conditioned one way or the other. So this lockdown is a wonderful barometer. It's to see how we act. It's a trial run. There's those who are using the scriptures to bow now and, and do everything the government say. And there's those that are using the, the scriptures to stand. So it's not the scriptures. You can use the scriptures to suit whatever's in your heart. Satan used the scriptures to quote to Jesus. So don't tell me, oh, the Bible says this, the Bible says that. You need to be conditioned and get out of this world system and the religious system of Babylon now. 
it's time for us all to assess where we are. To see if we've been conditioned by the media over the last few years, the lies and propaganda. And if you're serious, you're serious you'll realise you've been deceived by Babylon. And you've got a short time to renew your mind. Prepare for the big lockdown when you won't be able to buy or sell. Start to deny yourself, take up your cross, follow Christ. Start to do what Jesus tells you and prepare. Well, I pray the Holy Ghost will convict those who are still able to discern that this lockdown will give you motivation, backbone to start changing before it's too late. This is the age of the great falling away and the age of great deception. Read the last few epistles uh, before Revelation. Start at Thessalonians and read through. I've been reading through. I'm in Revelation now. It's amazing how much information about the last days, about prepare yourself, be sober, be vigilant, watch out for the false prophets, the great falling away before that day of the Lord. And read my Babylonian books. I'm, I'm pushing them because there's so much information in here. I've written five volumes. I wrote them 10 years ago. And the, the first time I preached them was 20 years ago. So this is not just new stuff for the lockdown. There's lots of information in. I talk about Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in, in greater detail than I can just scratch the surface in a few minutes, uh, life in lockdown. So get them, and there's information that will help you to prepare yourself. It'll be too late when the time comes. You'll act on how you've been conditioned. So the time's gone. Think about what I've said. I'm very serious about it. You need to prepare yourself now for the great final lockdown. This is just a trial run. And if you can't see that and think it's just about a pandemic of a virus, you're already deceived. Start to research. Start to think about what's happening. We're in the last of the last days. Time's gone. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. May God grant you wisdom and understanding of these last days. Have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow for another vlog.